Today, we will learn about proportion. Can you tell what is the meaning of proportion? Think for a while. Absolutely correct. We can understand the word proportion as equal ratio. Equal means same. From this, we can derive the meaning of proportion as same ratio. So let's learn about proportion. Here is a picture whose length is 5 inches and width is 7 inches. Suppose we have to make it bigger. In order to make the picture bigger, we can increase its length. Then, the length of the picture will increase but the width will remain the same. By doing so, the picture will not look like the original picture. If we keep the length as it is and increase the width, even then the picture will not look like what it was before. Can you tell how we can increase the size of this picture so that it looks exactly like the original one? Think a while. Let me tell you. If the ratio of the length to the width of the original picture is equal to the ratio of the length to the width of the bigger picture, only then the picture will look like before. Here, the ratio of the length to the width of the original picture is 5 is to 7. If both the length of the picture and the width of the picture is increased by 2 times, then the ratio of the length to the width of the picture will be 10 is to 14. By doing so, the picture will become bigger in size but it will look exactly the same. Since the numerator and denominator of 5 is to 7 is multiplied by the same number, we can say that 5 is to 7 and 10 is to 14 are equal ratios. If two ratios are equal, then we can say they are in proportion. We use these symbols to denote equality in proportion. Therefore, we can write 5 is to 7 is equal to 10 is to 14 or 5 is to 7 is proportionate to 10 is to 14. Order has great significance in proportion. Here, 5 is to 7 is proportionate to 10 is to 14 because 5 by 7 is equal to 10 by 14. We cannot change the order of proportion and write it as 5 is to 7 is proportionate to 14 is to 10. Can you tell the reason for this? Think for a while. Let me tell you. This is because 5 by 7 is not equal to 14 by 10. Therefore, the quantities should be expressed in the proper order of proportion. Each quantity expressed in proportion is called term. So the given proportion 5 is to 7 is proportionate to 10 is to 14. 5, 7, 10 and 14 are terms. The first and the last terms among these terms are called extreme terms. For instance, in the given proportion, 5 and 14 are extreme terms. Similarly, the second and the third terms among these terms are called middle terms. For instance, in the given proportion, 7 and 10 are middle terms. Let us understand proportion with another example. Tina and Shelley have made 7 garlands together. They earned rupees 35 by selling them. Since Tina has made 4, and Shelley has made three garlands, then how many rupees should Tina and Shelley get? We can divide 35 rupees into two equal parts. Then, each part will be 17.5. In this way, Tina can get 17.5 rupees and Shelley can get 17.5 rupees. But will that be correct? Think for a while. You've got it right. This will not be correct. Since Tina has made more garlands, she should get more money than Shelley. This will be correct only when Tina and Shelley get the amount in the same proportion in which they have made garlands. To know the amounts to be distributed to each of them, we need to divide 35 rupees in such a way that the ratio of money received by Tina and Shelley should be equal to the ratio of garlands made by Tina and Shelley respectively. This means, out of 35 rupees, 4 parts go to Tina and 3 parts go to Shelley. Therefore, the total number of parts divided is 4 plus 3 which is equal to 7. Thus, in total 35 rupees, 
4 by 7 parts belong to Tina and 3 by 7 parts belong to Shelley. So Tina gets her share into total amount which is equal to 4 by 7 into 35 which is equal to 140 by 7 which is equal to 20 rupees. Similarly, Shelley gets her share into total amount which is equal to 3 by 7 into 35 which is equal to 105 by 7 which is 15 rupees. Thus, out of 35 rupees, Tina should get 20 rupees and Shelley should get 15 rupees. Only then, 35 rupees can be divided in the ratio of garlands made by them. Hence, the ratio of the amount received by Tina to the amount received by Shelley is 20 is to 15. Are the ratios 4 is to 3 and 20 is to 15 equal? Think a little. Absolutely correct. If we divide the numerator and the denominator of 20 is to 15 by 5, then we get the ratio 4 is to 3. Therefore, we can say that 4 is to 3 and 20 is to 15 are equal ratios. That means they are in proportion. So, we can write the proportion in this way. 4 is to 3 is equal to 20 is to 15 or 4 is to 3 is proportionate to 20 is to 15. Can you give some more examples by looking at your nearby surroundings? Try and do it. Today, we have learnt proportion. In the next video, we will understand it in a better way with some more examples of proportion.